The planet is running out of green. According to the United Nations, 41% of Earth's land is already desert, and another 40% is on the brink of turning into one. No water, no trees, no life. Yet in China, one man took a stand and changed everything. In just 30 years, he planted over 300 million willow trees, released 4.5 million rabbits, and installed 196,000 solar panels, arranged in the shape of a giant galloping horse in the middle of the desert. The United Nations later recognized this project as a global model for fighting desertification, an honor previously shared only with Uzbekistan. So who was behind this miracle? And how could rabbits possibly save a desert? Let's find out. You're looking at the Kubuki Desert, China's seventh largest desert, stretching across 7,200 square miles, about the size of Massachusetts. It sits in northern China, where winters are freezing, summers are scorching, and almost nothing survives. In winter, the wind cuts like knives at minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and in summer, the ground burns under relentless heat. Decades ago, this place wasn't just sand. It was farmland, with rivers, grasslands, and villages. But then, everything began to disappear. The wind grew stronger. The grass vanished, and the sand began to move, swallowing homes, roads, and fields. By the 1950s and 60s, the desert was expanding 25 miles eastward, burying thousands of acres under dunes nearly 200 feet high, China tried to fight back, launching one of the largest anti-desertification campaigns in history. They planted windbreak forests, banned grazing, dug deep wells. But it wasn't enough. The desert kept marching forward. Then came Wang Wenbiao, known today as the Desert King. But he didn't start that way. He was once a poor teacher in Inner Mongolia, biking six miles through sand every day to reach his classroom. The wind would sometimes bury his bicycle halfway, sand choking his lungs. One day, exhausted, he made a vow. If I can't escape the desert, I'll make it pay rent. And he meant it. Starting with almost nothing, Wang poured in his savings, even borrowed money, to do what everyone else said was impossible. In 1988, with just a small salt company, he began a wild experiment spending millions to build windbreaks, plant 50 million willows, and reclaim 1,400 square miles of dead land. People called him crazy. Officials called him a dreamer. But he stayed in the desert, studying its winds, moisture, and soil. And then came his most daring idea yet. Rabbits. Yes, rabbits. Over 4 million Rex rabbits now live in the once barren desert. It sounds unbelievable. No robots, no AI, just small furry animals. But these aren't ordinary rabbits. They're French-bred Rex rabbits, nicknamed white gold in the fur industry. Their coats are as soft as velvet, smooth as otter skin, and don't need shaving or plucking. A single pelt sells for about $30, while raising one costs barely $2. No surprise that China now controls 80% of the global Rex fur market. Each female can have up to 25 litters a year, producing 200 to 300 offspring. And they thrive even in minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit weather. They drink little, eat dry grass, and reproduce constantly. But the rabbits weren't just released randomly. They live in closed-loop eco-farms. Their meat is used for food, their fur for clothing, their organs for traditional medicine, and their manure is the real treasure. Rabbit droppings are packed with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, exactly what the desert sand lacks. When mixed into the soil, it transforms dry sand into fertile brown earth. And there's a bonus. Rex rabbits can't digest grass seeds. So every time they do their business, they're literally planting seeds in fertilizer. When the rains arrive, those seeds sprout, bringing green back to life. Remember those millions of willows? They weren't random either. Wang Wenbiao knew that for rabbits to thrive, they needed food and shade, so he turned to willows. 
Their roots reach 300 feet deep, almost as tall as a 30-story building, tapping into underground water and locking the sand in place. And this started the perfect natural cycle. Willows feed the rabbits, rabbits fertilize the soil, and the soil nourishes the willows. A self-sustaining loop, zero waste, 100% renewal. Scientists estimate that each acre of this willow rabbit system produces five tons of organic humus per year, turning dead sand into farmland in just three to five years. In a decade, 300 million willows created a green wall thousands of miles long, cutting wind speeds by 90% and stopping 15 million tons of sand annually. But Wong didn't stop there. He transformed 7,200 square miles of desert into a living laboratory of ecological innovation. He deployed 100 bulldozers and 300 workers operating up to 18 hours a day, flattening dunes and building wind fences that stretched for miles. Within just five years, nearly 1,200 square miles, almost the size of Rhode Island, turned green again. Millions of willows grew, millions of rabbits multiplied. Thousands of families returned to their homes once buried by sand. By the 2010s, the Dalet Banner region had 4.5 million Rex rabbits generating 560 million win, about $76 million and lifting 10,000 families out of poverty. Each family needed about three to four thousand dollars to start and could earn four times that within a year. Just when people thought Kabuki had reached its limit, Wong stunned the world once again with solar power. Right in the heart of the desert, once called the Dead Sea, he built the Junma Solar Power Plant a massive complex of 196,000 panels arranged to form the shape of a galloping horse. From space, it looks like a work of art, and it is. It's officially recognized by the Guinness World Records as the largest energy artwork on Earth. What was once endless sand is now a symbol of life, power, and possibility, proof that even the harshest deserts can bloom again when innovation meets determination. Every year, Junma Solar Farm produces 2.3 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, enough to power more than 400,000 people, roughly the population of Miami, Florida. But what truly makes this project special isn't just the power it generates. It's what happens beneath the panels. They reduce wind speeds by up to 50%, creating pockets of shade where grass can grow. Under that living carpet, rabbits, sheep, and geese roam freely, nature's own team of biological mowers. The result? The soil stabilizes, the sand stops blowing, and an entirely new ecosystem begins to take root right below the solar field. By 2022, Junma had saved 760,000 tons of coal and cut 1.85 million tons of CO2, equal to planting over 80 million trees. In just four years, what was once called the Dead Sea transformed into 2,600 acres of green energy oasis. From rabbits, willows, and sunlight, Wang Wenbiao built a complete closed-loop value chain, producing meat, fur, manure, biogas, tourism, and solar power all in one cycle. And the numbers are staggering. Between 2010 and 2020, Kubuki's ecological economy generated over $10 billion, becoming Asia's most profitable green development model. Then, something extraordinary happened. After decades of human struggle, nature finally responded. A 2023 report from China's Ministry of Ecology revealed that the number of wild deer, desert foxes, and migratory birds in Kubuki has quadrupled since 1990. Species once thought gone forever are returning, to fields that were once nothing but sand and bones. Even groundwater, the desert's liquid gold, has risen by five to six and a half feet in just two decades. Drill a well today, and you'll reach water at half the depth your grandparents once needed. That's the difference between dead land and living land. Over 100 native plant species, from feather grass and desert poplars to delicate wildflowers, have reappeared. Golden dunes now share the horizon with patches of green and young forests glowing under the sun. 
Even the soil itself has changed, no longer flying away with every gust, but soft, damp, and smelling of life. Now let's fly 4,000 miles south, to Australia, where this same animal once caused one of the worst ecological disasters in history. In the mid-19th century, a British settler brought just 24 European rabbits for sport. Sounds harmless, right? But within 50 years, their numbers exploded to over 1 billion. Each rabbit could eat as much grass as a lamb, and together, they devoured almost two-thirds of Australia's plains, turning fertile fields into desert. The government tried everything, 2,000-mile fences, the myxomatosis virus, even mass culls with explosives and guns. Nothing worked. So why were rabbits a curse in Australia but a blessing in China? The answer lies in human design. In Kabuki, Rex rabbits are never released into the wild. They live in controlled eco-farms, eating willows, producing manure, enriching the soil, and driving profit. It's not about rabbits alone. It's about building an ecosystem that sustains itself. Of course, not everything is perfect. Some environmentalists say the so-called rabbit miracle is just one small part of the massive ENN group ecosystem. The company Wang Wenbiao founded. They argue that China's media overemphasized the rabbits, while the real success came from government planning, investment, and advanced land management technology. Experts also warn that if this model scales too fast, it might backfire. Excess nitrogen from rabbit manure could alter soil pH, affect groundwater, and trigger algae blooms. In some pilot sites, green algae have already appeared near fertilizer ponds. But despite the criticism, the United Nations saw something different. In 2011, Kabuki was officially recognized by the UN Convention to Combat Desertification as a global model for land restoration, one of only a handful worldwide. By 2019, it had become an international demonstration zone for sustainable development in arid regions. And the Kabuki story didn't end at China's borders. Its lessons are now echoing across Africa, the Middle East, and Europe, inspiring a new vision of planetary regeneration. Take Andalusia in southern Spain, once the granary of the Roman Empire, now one of Europe's most endangered regions. Rainfall there has dropped by over 40% in just 30 years. Rivers have dried up, farmland is cracking, and wells must reach 650 feet just to touch groundwater. Today, the European Union warns that 75% of Spain's land faces desertification, making it the driest hotspot in Europe. But instead of surrendering, Spain chose to fight back, the Kabuki way. Inspired by China's model, the government launched the Andalusia Restoration Plan 2030, guided by a simple but radical philosophy. Don't fight the desert. Bring it back to life. They're building a Mediterranean green wall, planting millions of olive trees, acacias, and native grasses to retain moisture, while turning farms into regenerative ecosystems, treating soil, water, and climate as one living system. New agro-photovoltaic farms are rising too, where crops grow under solar panels that generate clean energy and protect the earth beneath from drying out. From a land once buried under endless sand, Kubuki has become a global symbol of hope. Here, people didn't just conquer nature, they learned to live with it. If a desert in China can come back to life, what's stopping the rest of the world? What do you think? Could this green miracle save our planet? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.